Senator, I'll send it back. Yeah, thanks, Acting Deputy uh, <coughs> President. Well, Senator Gallagher is almost right when she talks about the government's willingness to enter into an arrangement to forego millions of dollars in tax revenue in order to benefit political mates. But you're out by 27 years, 29 years, Senator Gallagher, as I'll explain in a few moments' time. Acting Deputy President, the genesis of the background of this scenario goes back to 1987 and beyond of the then stock market crash during the time of Mr Brian Burke as the Premier of this state. And it was a time when Burke and his mates Bond, Connell, Holmes Accord and others ran Western Australia like their own personal fiefdom. We go then to 1988 when Mr Robert Holmes Accord owned the Bell Group. Do you know what the Bell Group was? It was largely involved in transport, heavy transport, a big cash cow. So <coughs> Holmes Accord owns the uh, owns the Bell Group, but of course, as a result of the 87 stock market crash, he's gone bad. To whom does he turn, Acting Deputy President? He turns to his mate Burke, now managing the most rotten government, a Labor government, the most rotten government probably ever since uh, this uh, country state was ever developed. And I know Senator uh, uh, Stirl will not agree with me. So, what happened? The deal was done. On behalf of the Western Australian community and Bond, the Bond Group bought the assets of the Bell Group. And then, of course, as we know, by 1991, she goes to the wall. She goes to the wall. And of course, it goes into liquidation. And who then was asked to pick up the cost of all this exercise, Mr Acting Deputy President? None other than the Western Australian community through a levy on third party vehicle insurance. Senator Stirl assured me earlier that this was history. It had all finished. It hasn't finished. It's ongoing to this very day, Acting Deputy President. But let me explain to Senator Gallagher why it is that she's quite right that there was a willingness on the part of a government to enter into an arrangement to forego millions of dollars of tax revenue. By 1992-3, the Premier of the state was Ms Carmen Lawrence. Her brother, Bernard Lawrence, made the point publicly that as a result of the efforts of the Burke government, the corruption and the rot that was the Burke Labor government, his estimate at that time in 1990 was that that government had cost the taxpayer of Western Australia some $600 million. In today's dollars, $1.2 billion. This is the brother of the Premier of the state who said you have to have a royal commission into the rot that was the Western Australian Burke, followed by Dowding, followed by Lawrence Labor government. And this brings me to the point, Acting Deputy President, because Senator Gallagher could not have known how right she was. Because in 1987, and this is in evidence to the Royal Commission that became known as the WA Inc. Royal Commission, forced upon Premier uh, Lawrence, partially by her own brother, but also by academics and even by then journalists in Western Australia. Absolutely. Senator Smith is right. People by then were marching in the street. The corruption was there for all to see. And this is what Mr Connell said under oath in evidence uh, to the Royal Commission. Mr Connell alleged in evidence that Hawke, being then Labor Prime Minister Hawke dropped a proposed gold tax after Connell and various Perth high flyers donated $250,000 each to Labor during an infamous lunch in Brian Burke's office. <laughs> Senator Gallagher is right. There was an attempt by Labor mates to avoid tax that was to do with lifting or not imposing a tax on gold. There's no question at all here, Acting Deputy President, and through you to the gallery, in the issue that's come before us today, Senator Gallagher would have been far wiser to learn the lessons of history to make sure that she didn't make the fool of herself. So here is Connell in evidence damning himself and others for the fact they all got their checkbooks out and gave quarter of a million dollars to the Labor Party so that then Prime Minister Hawke would not charge a proposed gold tax, which of course would have been revenue to the people of Australia. 
This was the saddest part of the whole sad litany of Western Australia during that era, Acting Deputy President. And I was asked this morning, because of my interjections at question time, why did I have such a keen interest in it? Well, I was in business in Western Australia at that time. And let me just tell you, I thought I was the front runner for an engineering project of which I had introduced this technology into Western Australia. It was original, it was unique. I engaged the services of experts from the eastern states. I influenced the then minister simply by saying to him, please consider this new, unused, untested technology. And of course, he then went and got his own consultant engineers in his department to go and check. And indeed, the technology that I had suggested did become the technology that was used on that project. We went to tender acting deputy president, but I'll tell you what I was told behind the scenes. I was told if I didn't use a certain firm of engineers, a certain firm of consultants, a certain firm of electricians and plumbers and carpenters and transport organisations, and by the way, if there wasn't going to be a brown paper bag with money in it, I was unlikely to win that tender. Having been the person who introduced that technology into Western Australia, well, we went ahead with our tender, acting deputy president. And do you know what? I wasn't going to be party to that. I was not going to be party to the corruption and the rot that had become the state Labor government in Western Australia. So history records that my company did not win that tender. Another party did, who presumably was willing to go down the path of these others. And of course, the wrong technology was put into place and it subsequently failed. So when I say I speak with some passion about my recollection and my memory, it's not just the $50 per vehicle per annum that we've all had to pay for donkey's years to repay the actual debt incurred in this circumstance. It is my own personal memory of those times. But the question now becomes acting deputy president. Who funded the litigation? The litigation, of course, by the liquidator was against the Commonwealth Bank, it was against Westpac, it was against NAB, it was a consortium of some 20 banks. But who funded that litigation? Did the Commonwealth Government fund the litigation? No. The Commonwealth Government didn't put a penny in. Did other creditors put any money? No. No, 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 no. It fell to the Western Australian community. Now, that court case started in the 1990s. It eventually was dealt with by Justice Owen over 404 sitting days in 2002 3 And, of course, history records that, indeed, he found in favour of the liquidator and the Western Australian Insurance Commission. So we had a circumstance acting deputy president where that litigation, at the expense solely of the Western Australian taxpayer, went on and on and on. Until such time, which brings us to the point being raised by Senator Gallagher today, and that is the possible involvement of the now Western Australian Liberal-led government and the coalition government here in Canberra. Those of us who know anything about litigation know that in most cases it's a lawyer-led recovery. They will keep going until there's no money left. And that's the situation that was facing the Western Australian government in 2015. If anybody's been listening to this debate, you would have thought that somehow there's a backyard deal being done between Attorney General, listen, between Attorney General Brandis and Western Australian ministers for some gain. Well, let me go to the correspondence which all of us have. I go to the letter of the 15th of April 2015, in which Treasurer Nahan is writing to uh, Federal Treasurer Hockey, and he is speaking about proposed legislation to be brought to the Western Australian Parliament to try and bring this event to a conclusion. And you would be amazed in the gallery, through you, Acting Deputy President, to learn that that legislation had the full support of the Labor opposition in Western Australia and the Greens political party. You would think this is some Liberal stitch-up. But let me just quote, if I may, a couple of words from Nahan. 
saying litigation between the creditors about distribution is in full flight in both Australia and England and is likely to run for another five to ten years, out to 2026. And now we have the circumstance from Nahan in which he says to Hockey, accordingly, the Western Australian government is planning to introduce legislation that will, and here's dot point one, deliver a more rapid financial return to the Commonwealth, the state government and other creditors. Who's first? The Commonwealth. What's this nonsense about trying to stitch up a deal to avoid $300 million of tax revenue to the Australian taxpayer? After the Labor government in 1987 accepted money from their mates to avoid tax. The second purpose, eliminate further speculation by professional litigation funders, the very ones who were going to extend this and extend it and extend it till there was nothing left. And thirdly, to ensure no misdistribution and should only apply to Bell companies registered in Western Australia. So where's the problem with that? Nahan says to the Federal Treasurer, we want to bring this to a conclusion with the, with the support of our Labor and Green colleagues, and the first creditor to be dealt with is the Federal Government. And Co Hockey writes back to him, amongst other things, and says, I trust the Western Australian Government will therefore continue to engage in good faith in the forthcoming mediation process. In the few seconds I've got left to be acting Deputy President, the advice I've learned over time is that I never try and pick a Queen's Council lawyer because they're good. And what I've seen evidenced in the last few days in this place is that Senator Brandis, he's good all right, he's a jolly sight better than anyone who's tried to come up against him. There's nothing to Thank see you, here. Thank you, Senator Mack. Senator McKim.